It has about two weeks more for us to vote. And um, elections are a simple matter of choice. They are asking you to choose between a number of things. And so if you have to choose between a number of things, you have to think about what is valuable to you. And what is valuable to you in an election is the party and the government that you have seen changes your lives. Everything that we have in Garu here was brought by the NDC administration. Our roads, NDC. Our schools, NDC. Our chips compounds, NDC. Our electricity, NDC. Our water, NDC. Everything, NDC. So what other choice do we have but to vote for NDC to come back and continue the good work it was doing? Ezu. 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 You see, every government must work to change the lives of the people. And the way you can change the lives of the people is to give them opportunity. If you build a school, the mothers will be able to send the children to school. If you build a hospital, when people are sick, they are able to go and they are able to get treatment for their illnesses. If you make a road, it makes it easy for the farmers to take their produce from here to Boko. If you extend electricity, it makes it possible for the children to study at night and be able to get better grades. It makes it possible to have small grinding mills. It makes it possible to have small businesses. If you give good drinking water, then people have good drinking water and they say water is life. And so we were building the Garu Hospital. It was one of the hospitals that we chose to be built in this country. We got funding for various hospitals around the country, and we started the Garu Hospital. But for the fact that NDC left office, I am positive that that hospital would have been completed by now. You know what happened? The foundation was being done, work was ongoing, and NDC left office. New government comes. You know what they did? The executives of MPP went and took the iron rods and the other building materials, went and sold them and divided the money. No, this is shameful. If you cannot continue the hospital, at least don't go and steal the building materials on site and sell it and pocket the money. But I just want to assure you that NDC will come. And NDC will come and continue your hospital and complete it for you. We believe in people's livelihoods. And so we don't do one village, one dam. Those little, those little duck ponds that during the dry season dry up, if 10 cows drink from it every day, within two months the water is finished. So we decided to do the Tamni Irrigation Dam. I came here, I cut the sword for the work to start. Work was ongoing until we left office. That Tamni Irrigation Dam is going, to, going bring to bring 3,000 acres of land under irrigation so that all our young boys in Garu who want to do farming all year round and be able to make money would have given you small, small plots at the uh, Tamni Irrigation Project so that every year you can do onions, you can do sorghum, you can do any crop you want all the year round, 12 months in a year. And the purpose of that irrigation dam was to stop our young people for drift, from drifting southwards so that at least they can have something to do here. NDC left office after down the Tamni Dam is still hanging. If NDC was in office, that dam would have been completed by now and people would have been earning money.
we were extending electricity to many communities in this area. Many communities got electricity. Others were on the schedule to get electricity. And NDC left power. Where we left it, it's where it got stuck. No additional communities have been electrified. Indeed, I mean, you can ask the new patriotic party. They say they want four more to do more. But the question you ask, the people in Garu should ask is, to do what? Is, because the logic is that you should have done something. And so you want to do more than what you have done. But when you've done nothing, how can you say you want four years more to do more when you have done nothing? And so it's not four years to do more. It's more four, four more to steal more. Ezu, time is fast spent, so I'm not going to speak long. We have so many programs for you. We have technical vocational training. Every district is going to get a technical vocational training center. We're going to register all the young people. And whatever you want to learn, a skill, either an electrician, a plumber, a hairdresser, a dressmaker, will take you there and go and teach you free of charge. Those who want to be apprentices will assign you to masters and they'll train you and the fees that you have to pay the masters, we will take that debt and we'll pay it for you. When we come, we'll repair the road network and we'll do the road from Garu to Bolga so that it will be Kota, beautiful road. We'll introduce the free primary health care program. And so if you don't have an NHIS card, you can get full treatment if you are sick. If you go to any of the five levels of hospitals, from district hospital to CHIPS compound, you just show your Ghana card and you'll be given free treatment. This is the opportunity for us to make a change. We've seen four years of MPP administration. It's not been good. Our lives are hard. Nothing is working. The economy is broken. Corruption has gone through the roof. The president is not able to do anything about it. And as the special prosecutor told you, he expected that he will have independence to do his work. Instead, they tied his hands so that he cannot prosecute people who are close to the president. We heard about PDS. PDS is an electricity company. They tried to take it over and uh, distribute the shares amongst themselves. And as a result of that, Ghana lost $290 million from America. Every mining company working in Ghana, we have 10% shares for the people of Ghana. It has been there since time immemorial. It was there in Rawlings' time. It was there in Kofor's time. It was there in my time. This government comes, and they take all the 10% royalties, and they go and register a company outside the country, offshore, and faceless people, close to the president, want to take all our gold royalties and go and sell it to a company abroad. And so the time has come for us to make a change. This is our opportunity. This election is a rescue mission. It is a, an election about our future. It is an election about our children's future. It is an election about our grandchildren's future. And so let us not make a mistake. The point is our lives have gotten worse. When I was president, a gallon of petrol was selling for 14 CDs, 50 pesos. They said it was too expensive and that I was wicked, and that the pe petrol price was full of taxes. And so when they come, they'll take all the taxes off, and they'll sell petrol at eight cities per gallon. You remember that in 2016. Today in Garu, how much is a gallon of petrol? 22 cities. 
for a gallon of petrol. And they said that drivers could not buy petrol when it was 14 cities, 50 pesos. Today, now that is 22, 23 cities, can drivers buy? When I was president, you know the gari we eat. And the local of gari was five cities. And they said I was wicked because gari is poor people's food and it's too expensive under me. And when they come, they will make sure gari is abundant, food is abundant. Today, you know how much an Oloka of Gari is in Accra? It's 20 Ghana cities, my brothers and sisters. So life is hard, people are suffering, and we have an opportunity to make a change. And so let's not make a mistake. Let's do what President Kufo said. Shewa Setna Nato Abapa. Look at your life and vote wisely. Now, as I wind up, let me tell you something important. God's time is the best. Sometimes you want something, but God does not give it to you. I'm an example of that. In 2016, I stood for election. I wanted to continue my second term as president, but God did not give it to me. And so I handed over to the next person, and I wished him well. I said, take it. God be with you. Because... God has a time for everybody. And so if you go and contest and you don't win, it is not the end of life. A time will come when your time will come again. But especially in a situation where you've been there before and you were supported by people to go there. And so if, if it is somebody else's turn and you go for primaries and you don't win, look at Dr. Thomas Anaba and his colleague. Tomorrow, it might be their turn. What did they do when they lost? They didn't go and stand independent. They've all come on this stage and asked all of you to vote for Honorable Alazuga. And yet, for somebody who's our friend, he's our comrade, I've been in parliament with him before. I know him very well. I mean, if the people did not select you, support the young man, help NDC to come to power, somebody like him. Someone like him, if NDC wins, by all means, we'll find something for him to do. But unfortunately, he decides to run independent against our, our, our official candidate. I just want to tell you that the message they are giving that NDC is divided, NDC is not divided. Today, we are more together than ever before. The General Secretary has acted. He says, everybody running independent, go out of the party so that we know you are not a member of our party. And so, let me tell you, let me tell you that he's our friend. He was in parliament with me. But when it comes to principle, principle is principle. If you are NDC, please don't vote for Honorable Dominic Azuma. Don't. We have only one parliamentary candidate in Garu constituency. And that one parliamentary candidate is Honorable Alazuga. There must be no skirt and blouse. If you like JM, then you must vote for Alazuga. Please, they are going around and distributing little monies and all that. Those monies they are distributing, they are Ghanaians' money. Indeed, I put that money in the stabilization fund. It was $300 million. And we kept it in the stabilization fund so that any time there's a catastrophe, we can fall on it and use it to alleviate the, the problem. 
And so when coronavirus came, they needed $2 million to buy protective equipment. And the government, the finance ministry said they didn't have it. And so we said, go and look in the stabilization fund. President Mahama left some money there. Go and take that money and come and do the work for coronavirus. And so they went and took $1.2 and went to parliament for approval to spend that money. And when they allocated the money, $600 million was supposed to go to support small and medium enterprises because the coronavirus had affected Ghanaian businesses. And so that is the money they are going around and sharing and saying that vote for Akufuado. Akufuado said uh, if you take this money, he won't collect it back. But if Mama comes, Mama will come and take it. Let them bring the money, you take it. I'm not coming back to collect that money from you. Is, indeed, the money that they are giving to our small traders and others should be more than it is. They are giving you 500 CDs. They should be giving you more than that, 2,000 Ghana CDs. But because their party executives have taken part of the money, that is why they are coming and giving you 500, 500, 500 CDs and saying vote for Nana Kofuado. Take that money use it, but when you get to the ballot box, vote for NDC and John Mahama to come back. You see, Free SHS has come to stay. NDC is coming to make it better. Indeed, we actually started Free SHS in 2015 with day students and then in 2016, we added 147,000 boarding students. And so they came and continued the free SHS that I launched. But their implementation has been poor. And that is why we ended up in the double track. I started building those community day secondary schools, which, of which one is here in Garu, so that we could create enough access for all the children to be able to go to school. When they came, they stopped all those schools. Many of the schools have come to a standstill. But if they had continued, would have co uh, created enough room for all children to be able to get uh, secondary school places. Each of those community day schools can take up to a thousand students. And so we're building 200 of them. So if we finish 200 of those schools, imagine 1,000 times 200. That would have been 200,000 new vacancies in senior high school we will not have ended up with a double track. And so when we come, we're going to put those schools, the community day schools, on a fast track. And then your school here, we're going to build a girls' dormitory and a boys' dormitory so that those who don't come from the community can get a place to stay. We will make it into a boarding school so that those who don't come from the community can have a place to stay and be able to learn. And so we'll finish those schools very quickly. And I've made a promise to the people of Ghana that when I become president, 7 January 2021, I give you one year, I will cancel the double track. I'll remove the double track from there. I want to acknowledge somebody. One of the things this MPP administration uses is fear. If you criticize the administration, they come after you. They will either dismiss you, or they will threaten you, or they will even kill you in some instances. We remember Ahmed Swali was killed. Up to now, his killers have not been found. There was a journalist here in Upper East. He investigated some uh, um, uh, malfeasance and he had to run away for his life. Manasseh Azure had to run away from this country, go and hide in South Africa for some time until they stopped looking for him. And so this government is a very vicious government. I've spoken to several journalists. As soon as they do a program criticizing the government, they get threatening phone calls. This was not the case when NDC was in government. And so we need to get this government out. 
And there's somebody who has suffered exactly what I'm talking about. And that is the former headmaster of Timpani Second Senior High School. Our national organizer went to his school and spoke to the children. And a video was done of him speaking to the children. The children were talking about the challenges they were facing in school. And when that video came out, they decided to victimize the headmaster. And so he's been victimized, but he's still proud. He's still happy. And we're all proud of him that he stood his ground. Most other people have become quiet. There are many headmasters who want to talk because of the problems. But when you talk, they will suck you or they will suspend you or they will transfer you. This is not the country that we envisaged when we passed the 1992 constitution. Nana Akufado prides himself as a human rights lawyer, but he's become a democratic dictator. My running mate was going on a radio station to do an interview. You know what they did? They jammed the frequency of the radio station. I was going on a, the same station to do an interview. I was supposed to start at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. they jumped the frequency of the station. I mean, what kind of government is this? I mean, so even free speech, you're afraid of free speech. What kind of country are they building? We need to make a change. And so the former headmaster of Timpani SHS, I salute you wherever you are. Oh, you're here. Okay. Thank you. I salute you for your bravery, and I can assure you, and I know that NDC is winning. And when NDC wins, we shall fully reinstate you. Maybe at some other secondary school, but we shall fully reinstate you, and whatever you have lost will be recompensed to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, there are some people who have uh, moved to NDC. Uh, from MPP, they found that they've been deceived. There are 207 of them. And so I wish to welcome them into the NDC. Please embrace them as brothers and sisters and receive them. There is enough space under the umbrella for everybody. And so let's receive them as brothers and sisters and let's accept them into our fold. I want to thank them for seeing the light and uh, for moving over to the NDC party. Now I'll just show you, on the ballot paper we are number two. And so if you see, this is an example of the ballot paper. And so this is number two. You see my, you see my picture, you see my name, you see the umbrella. And then this is where you put your thumbprint. So when you take the ballot paper, just look for the second one. And then you put your thumbprint over there. And then in the parliamentary one, Honorable Alazuga is also number two. And so it's too sure. Too sure. Too sure. Too sure. Too direct. Too direct. Too direct. Thank you. Now. What you do is, remember, when you tamprint the ballot paper, make sure you tamprint in the middle. Don't let your tamprint go near this line or near this line. If your tamprint goes near the line and it touches or crosses the line, they'll say that your ballot is false. So put it right in the middle. Don't let it come down towards this line. If it comes near this line and it crosses, they'll say your ballot is false. So put it right in the middle. And after you have put your thumbprint in the middle, leave the paper on the table. Don't touch the paper. Look for a rag or something and clean your thumb. Clean the ink off your thumb so that your thumb will be dry. They normally put a rag there. If you look in the booth, you see a rag lying there. You take it and you clean your thumb properly before you touch the paper again. If you don't clean your thumb and the ink hasn't dried, and you touch the paper again, 
it will go and touch another part of the paper and it will make another thumbprint there. Once they see two thumbprints, they will say your ballot is a rejected ballot. And so those of you who have voted before, we brought a lot of sample ballot papers. For these next two weeks, go around all the areas and some of our elder mothers and fathers um, who have a problem with voting and a lot of our younger brothers and sisters who are going to be voting for the first time please take the ballot papers and go and teach them how to vote and so let me thank you once again i will introduce honorable alazuga officially so that everybody knows that he is the one that we have selected the one and only parliamentary candidate of the ndc no independent candidate no other person it is only him and so on 7 December 2020, cast your ballot for Honorable Akoka Alazuga. Thank you very much. God richly bless you. And God take everybody safely back home. Thank you.